G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoy today's episode, and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss an episode. With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, let's get right into it. Cheers. Posted by user sadmistake8919, titled... Am I the asshole here for informing my parents that my best friend kicked me out of our apartment because his girlfriend asked him to? So I, 21 female, have been friends with Mike, 21 male, for 16 years. We became friends officially in kindergarten, but our parents were friends in college. I honestly can't even call him a best friend. He's like a sibling, and in a way we were raised as siblings. Group family holidays, sleepovers, family vacations on both sides. At one point, we even all lived together for a year. I'm saying this because I know some people will ask. No, there's been no crushes or feelings on either side, at all. We haven't kissed, confessed feelings, or had crushes. It's been strictly sibling-like, and I'm saying that now because of what Mike's girlfriend has been saying. Mike and I share an apartment together near campus as we both attend college together. Around seven months ago, Mike met his girlfriend, April, 21 female. Now, I thought we would get along okay. I've only met her a couple of times because she has anxiety, but I had no problem at all with her until recently besides some minor things. Sometimes she would interject when Mike would call me his sister. It wasn't always, but normally like, well, technically you aren't siblings, which is 100% true, but it's how we viewed each other since we were kids. So almost a month ago, my class got cancelled, so I came home early. I walk in and right on the couch is Mike and April having sex. No, take off my uniform, April. (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) I'm having flashbacks. I'm having flashbacks. I scream, run to my room and frantically yell at Mike via text. He apologized and he thought that I would be gone longer. I made him clean the couch and, you know, all good, right? Nothing's good, OP. You triggered a trauma response in me. No, April for some reason got upset and felt that, in her words, I did that on purpose, despite it never happening before, and that it was inappropriate of me to walk in on them. Again, this was in the living room. Absolutely disgusting in my opinion, but I moved on, because it's not a big deal. Embarrassing, but nothing crazy. Anyway, Mike had been stressed recently because April's been asking him to distance from me. I thought she was just embarrassed, which I'd understand, so I'd tried being friendly and apologized. Well, last weekend, Mike sat me down and basically said that I had to move out because his girlfriend was upset with me living with him. I was floored. I got so upset, I don't think I've yelled and cried that much in my life. The basics is that he doesn't want me to, but he's pressured from his girlfriend, and he really loves her, so he wants to make her happy. He thinks that this shouldn't change our friendship and that he's just putting some distance between us. See, if he had asked me to move out, I'd understand. Okay, yeah, maybe you want to take your relationship to the next level, okay, but it was a demand. And not only that, he wanted to put space between our friendship. It was so effing hurtful. I've known him for 16 years and that's it? I'm gone for someone he's known for 7 months? I said he was choosing a short relationship over his sister, and that I don't want him to contact me if he's going to be like that. He said I was overreacting, but I called my parents and got them to pick me up. Literally, thank god they don't live far away, but like, what if they did? What did he expect me to effing do, just like sleep outside or something? Anyway, I obviously had to tell my parents what was going on, given that they had to pick me up and I was an emotional mess. I told them everything which caused a bit of an argument when they went to pick up some of my things the next day. They called Mike's parents and kind of chewed them out a bit, and from my understanding, they called Mike and did the same. Mike messaged me to say that he was upset that I couldn't be civil, and that he feels like I'm throwing away a friendship. I blocked him shortly after. Mike, you're the one having sex on a couch, let me remind you about civility here, buddy. Man who has not tasted grapes says sour. I've taken some time off classes, but I'm so effing hurt and upset. It hurts that he could just throw me away so easily. 
I don't think that I did anything wrong telling my parents, but I think it may have crossed a line when they phoned Mike's parents. Like I said previously, our parents are really close, and it's kind of messed with their friendship now. His parents have been really kind and apologetic, even though it's not their fault, and a part of me feels like I made this into a bigger mess. Also, I know I didn't have to leave. Me and Mike both pay an equal amount of rent for the apartment, but I didn't want to stay in a place that I wasn't wanted. I would have just made it difficult, and a worst case scenario, he would leave, which would have put a financial strain on me. In the comments, not shocked fruit weird says, not the asshole. Are you also on the lease? If so, contact the landlord to see if you can get off the lease and have the friend be solely responsible for rent. OP says, thank you. My parents said the same thing, I just haven't had the energy. I paid my last one this month, and from my understanding, he wants April to move in, so I think it'll be switching, although I haven't done it before, so I'm not sure. You need to call yourself and figure it out. Typically, landlords don't just allow people to switch out. Also, if you're smart, you won't allow her to live there while your name is on the lease. If anything happens at the apartment, you're on the hook, not her. Honestly, at this point, you need to be a witch to protect yourself. You need to have the landlord check the apartment and get your portion of the security deposit back. Then April needs to add her name and pay her portion. That way, if anything is damaged, you aren't on the hook. As long as your name is on the lease, you are liable. So if she goes crazy and trashes the place, instead of it affecting her, it affects you. OP says, shit, damn, okay. Yeah, thank you, I really needed to hear that. I'm calling today, then bloody waiting. Carbon Soul says, Then he can pay you out of your part of the deposit, or he can eat the cost of moving out himself. You don't have to move. You legally have a right to be there, and this is just his problem. Tell him that. OP replies, No, I totally get that. I know that I had no legal obligation to leave, and I had every right to stay. It was more so me being stubborn and not wanting to. At that point, I had my friend telling me that I had to leave and choosing someone else. I really didn't want to stay there. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but from my understanding, April is moving in soon. So I'll contact the landlord to let them know and to take my name off. Question. If Mike wanted to go to Poundtown with April, why didn't he do it in her living room rather than yours? OP says, we have an apartment off campus while she lives in a dorm, so we have a lot more space and privacy. I know they get it on sometimes, but it's so effing gross to do it in the living room. I paid for the couch there too. I'm just gonna say how fascinating it is that some of y'all are shitting all over the new girlfriend for asking Mike not to live with OP anymore. There's nothing in the OP that says she wanted to move in. That could all be on Mike. And secondly, if April wrote a thread here describing OP's relationship with Mike, y'all would be supporting her and asking him to make a choice and to respect April's boundaries. OP says, I can only go off of what I know. I know April is at least uncomfortable with my friendship with Mike. If Mike had come to me with these concerns and told me straight up, asking for space, I would have at least been understanding. I was asked to leave with no warning slash little time, and I was told that he was limiting our contact. No proper explanation or conversation. This is a 16-year friendship. My anger is mainly directed at him for how he is handling this, but I do admittedly have some issues with April too because of how she's been with our friendship. April is allowed to feel some type of way because of our friendship, and Mike is allowed to act on that but I also feel like I have a right to be upset over something that I can't really control. Not the asshole. But I also have a few questions. Has she ever tried telling him to cut off any other female friends that you know of? If she's forcing him to tell you to move out, it sounds like she might be trying to isolate him from any other girl in his life, friend or not. Not saying that what he did was right, but seven months is way too early for her to get so comfortable as to force him to tell his childhood best friend to move out of your shared apartment and move in herself. OP says, as far as I know, no. I think we have one other female friend, but she's dating a guy in the group, and April and her don't interact a lot. She's had a lot of issues with Mike's parents though, especially his mother, but I don't know the reason on either side for that. I haven't communicated with his mother for a bit, so I'm not sure what's going on there. 
I'll make a huge leap now. Info. Does his mum like you and hope that you would get together with your friends? Oh, no, not like that story. Oh, no, not like that one. Please, no. Is this a crossover episode of, like, three stories? OP says, definitely not. Or nothing that I know of, anyway. I'm close with his family in the same way that he is with mine, but there's never been any vibe from either of our parents that they wanted us together. Besides, this isn't his first girlfriend, so it's not like his mum is like this with all of them. Back up to the post, there's an edit. I read you all loud and clear. Thank you for waking my ass up. I've talked to my landlord. She said that she was uncomfortable with April moving in because she doesn't know her. I understood, so I'm moving my ass back tomorrow. I unblocked Mike and informed him. I explained that until our landlord says otherwise, I'm staying. Either he can leave and get a new place and keep paying the rent, or we can end our agreement together, and if our landlord agrees, they can start one. He replied, okay, we can talk about it tomorrow. So, we'll see. Thank you all so much for getting me up and going. I really had no idea how serious this situation could be until you all let me know how stupid I was being. I don't care if it's uncomfortable, I'm not wasting my money. Good on you, OP. Love to see the energy. But curse you for reminding me of the couch story. In the exact same vein, this is the exact same setup. Three generations of children cursed for that. <laughs> Your thoughts on this with April is allowed to feel some type of way because of our friendship, Mike is allowed to act on that, but you also have the right to be upset over something that you really can't control. I agree with all of that. You guys are all entitled to your emotions, all of your feelings are valid here. Age is definitely playing a role in this one. Thank God I'm not 21 again because I know that I'd be caught up in something like this. Hopefully I wouldn't be the one on the couch though, Jesus Christ. But I can definitely see this happening and you guys are young, Mike is acting on stupid horny emotion, April is acting on defensive emotion. It's a whole shit show, it's all a mess, and I, d I really don't blame your parents for lashing out like they have. I really do blame Mike, though, for so much of this. I don't think that Mike is taking a mature and level-headed approach to all of this. He's just like, oh shit, I messed up, but, uh, get out. <laughs> you can get out of the apartment right now. I know that I caused this mess, but you should get out so that I can feel better. And how dare you tell your parents about this that then come yell at me for my immaturity. You're an asshole for doing that. I thought you'd keep this under wraps. It's interesting that Mike is learning how the real world works and how accountability works. Hopefully this update kicks his ass a bit and he matures as a result of it. So, on to the updates. I came back to the apartment yesterday morning. I let Mike know beforehand and asked if April would not be there so we could talk alone. Mike was quite emotional and apologetic, which surprised me a little. I found out a bit more information that makes a bit more sense now. Mike has been under a lot of pressure for a while now to drop me. He thought that me moving out and distancing himself would be enough to appease April while still keeping our friendship. Obviously, he didn't expect me to take it the way I did, although what other way would I take it? And he didn't expect me to leave that day. I mean, yeah, he didn't specifically say pack your shit and leave now, but saying you need to leave and saying that he wanted distance over our 16-year relationship out of nowhere makes me feel like I couldn't have just gone to bed normally, you know? I've read everyone's comments so many times. I've drilled it into my head. So as much as it hurts, I'm keeping my distance from Mike at the moment. The fact that he never told me once about April wanting him not to talk to me, and he didn't even consider my circumstances before asking me to leave, like where else could I go, it's not a definite end to our friendship, but I'm not feeling pretty positive. Anyway, he apologized. He said that he missed me while I was gone, and that he knew that he effed up after he told me to leave, but that he just wanted to make April happy since he could see a future with her. April has lost her shit, to put it mildly, and she threw up a storm in the lobby of our apartment last night. Mike refused to let her in, which understandably made her lose her shit even more. Tons of colourful words thrown about on both ends. I'm a homewrecker, hua wa wa, a witch, which is laughable, and anyway, she's not allowed into our apartments now, period. At least until he decides on their relationship. 
Mike has been pretty upset today. He wants space from April because he said that he wants to end the relationship. Very surprising, but I'm cautiously optimistic since I'm not sure how willing he will be. We've had a bit of a heart to heart. Regardless of how upset and hurt I am, he is my brother. I'm trying to be a witch like I wanted to when I moved back in, but it's so hard when he's all mopey and sad. I told him that if he continues seeing her, I'm putting some distance between us respectfully to avoid this happening again. He said he doesn't want that. I talked with my landlord before moving back. She didn't want April moving in as she doesn't know her. She was a bit upset that this situation was happening as she didn't want drama, which I understand. I've moved back and I've discussed the lease with Mike. We renew in September, or that was the plan, so now we're deciding on how to go ahead. I feel like it'll be best for me to get my own place. Maybe this was long overdue to be honest, although Mike is saying that he wants us to continue being roommates next year, so we're discussing this at the moment. It's not really a super dramatic update, but at least the leasing issue has been solved. I'm not being kicked out or leaving until our lease is done, April isn't coming over for the foreseeable future, the only issue right now is my relationship with Mike. It's very awkward in the apartment. You can tell that something's changed. He's been trying to be friendly like we were before this, and he's apologized a lot which I appreciate, but I'm finding it a bit difficult to move on and to go back to normal. I'm not being a witch or mean, I'm just being slightly distant. Anyway, that's the update. I really want to thank you all again for making me realize how serious this could be. I honestly had no idea that you couldn't just switch who was renting, which is so embarrassing. Also, to the one woman in my DMs and comments spamming messaging me, you're insane. I don't know who hurt you, but get a life, please. This isn't even that serious. In the comments, Roadkill for Snack says, did Mike break down and explain how he changed from seeing a future with her to wants to end the relationship? Understanding his reasoning process may help to rebuild trust and demonstrate maturing of Mike. Was it the tantrum, damage to the friendship, damage to the relationship with his parents and your parents? If he was older and wiser, I think the insecurity of April, the inability to communicate, negotiate, and resolve conflict would be relationship red flags. OP says, He said that it was the few days that I was gone and had him blocked, that it put into perspective how much he missed me and that he imagined the next 30 years of his life like this. I'm not entirely sure. Even I was surprised by the switch up because even I thought that there would be drama between us when I came back. I hope Mike also sees the way April treated him and understands that the demands she made were toxic, possessive, and abusive. This is not a type of person to have a relationship or to see a future with. Missing you and imagining a life where he couldn't be with his friends and family is only one symptom of a person like April. Mike needs to learn to drop anyone who tries to come between him and a healthy familial relationship. As a mum, I like you two being roommates because you're less likely to have trouble with aggressive men. I'm a girl mum and think of these things. And for Mike, it's a great way to judge if the woman he's dating is psycho. OP replies, Honestly, that was one of the main reasons why we moved in together when we started college. Mike and my family were worried about me having a place to myself, and Mike's parents wanted me to keep an eye on him. He truly picked sticking his dick in crazy over his 16-year friendship and his parents since college friendship, now realizing he truly messed up everything to everyone involved without ever thinking about all the consequences, especially since OP's own actions and reactions were normal to do since all four parents knew about the apartment arrangements. He's reaping what he sowed with telling OP to move out. Now he can't handle that that's exactly what OP is doing again when the lease is up, and rightfully so, to never deal with his romantic relationship f-ups ever again under the same living space. Yeah, look, maybe my reaction was a little bit dramatic there too, because I didn't take into account just how unhinged April was. I'll admit that, I went on a little bit of a man-hating train, but I still stand true to that. Don't choose sticking your dick in crazy over a 16-year friendship. It's not worth it. You're gonna get burnt. I really hope that he learns his lesson from this and that he grows up a bit more as a result of his mistakes. I really don't want him to repeat that in the future again because OP, you deserve so much better than the treatment that you endured here.
but at least this is also a lesson for you too with who you share your living spaces with and who you can and cannot trust. Overall, thank you for the story. I really appreciated that. Our next post is by user Pisatch Problems, titled My 25 male, girlfriend 23 female, has been weird since having a cedar at my parents. So I've been dating my girlfriend Lily for a little over a year. It had been going great and we were getting very serious, even talking about moving in together. So my parents asked me to invite her over to their house for a Passover cedar last month. For those who don't know Passover, it's basically like a meal combined with a story to celebrate the story of Exodus, the Jews being freed from slavery in Egypt, Moses, etc. I've only had one other serious girlfriend when I was in college, and she was Jewish. Lily is not Jewish, but honestly, my parents don't care. They didn't really like my ex and seemed to really like Lily. I grew up very secularly. All that being said, there's a lot of Jewish-specific things happening during a Passover Seder, so I think my parents, especially my dad, felt this need to maybe over-explain things to Lily, and it seemed to make her uncomfortable. I didn't say anything at the time, which I regret, because I did notice that she seemed off, like quieter than usual, but I also thought that she might just be a little quiet because she was meeting my parents, and that saying something might draw more attention to it, which she wouldn't want. That's not an excuse, it's just an explanation of my mindset at the time. Anyways, since then, and it's nearly been a month, Lily has been kind of distant. She usually spends most nights at my apartment, but has only been over a couple of times and hasn't wanted to have sex. I noticed this within a week and tried to talk to her about it. I apologized for my parents' behavior and emphasized that I love her and her not being Jewish doesn't matter to me. She just kind of blushed bright red and said it was fine, but it's obviously not fine and she doesn't want to talk about it. Does anyone have any advice on how to broach this again, or what to say or do? I'm really lost and I don't want to lose my relationship over this. In the comments, an outrageous cloud says, If she won't talk to you about it, then there isn't much you can do. You might be completely wrong about why she's upset, but how would you know? She owes you a conversation. If she won't have a conversation about what she's feeling, your relationship isn't going to work. OP says, Thanks, I definitely feel that. The thing is, communication had never been a problem for us before. Maybe you're right, and I'm making too many assumptions though. I could try just like pointing out what I'm noticing to her and asking if something is wrong. I would definitely do that. Point out how she is pulled away and ask her what's wrong. Have you considered that you being Jewish does matter to her? And not in an anti-Semitic way, more so in the way of, oh wow, my boyfriend's culture is really different from mine, and I might want to be with someone long-term who shares my traditions. My parents are intermarried, and I'm a rabbi. As I became more religious as a teen, I had a pretty frank conversation with my mom about what it was like to raise a Jewish kid. She loves me and is happy for me, but there's certain things from her growing up that I never did and never wanted to do, and that makes her sad. As I've gotten older, I've stopped doing most culturally Christian traditions. My kids aren't going to celebrate Christmas or Easter at home, and that might be hard for my mom. In addition, some people from my mom's past have said pretty vile things to her for marrying a Jew. Her sisters don't always get it, although my grandparents were always pretty damn supportive. Interfaith relationships have a certain cost. That doesn't mean don't do them, there can also be some pretty beautiful moments, but there's a reason why, after growing up how I did, I decided to only date Jewish people. I wanted to share this very important aspect of myself with my life partner. OP says, No. I guess I hadn't considered that, because she knew that I was Jewish when we first met, and it had never been an issue. But maybe you're right, because this is the first Jewish ritual or holiday that she's ever participated in. As I said, I was raised very secularly, so it's just never come up. It would make me incredibly sad if that's what broke us up. I'm not planning to have any kids for at least a few years minimum, but I would be happy to raise them in multiple traditions when I do. There are so many things that could be going on in her head. Might not have anything to do with the over-explaining or the Judaism itself, although it also depends on what you mean by over-explaining. Are we talking about just explaining things like what the salt water represents, 
Or are we talking about stuff most Christians would also know, like, who is Moses? It can feel insulting to have things you already know explained to you. It's going to take a conversation of her explaining what's on her mind. So maybe open with her seeming a bit distant or upset lately, then see what she says rather than assume that it was about the cedar. And if she still says it's fine and nothing's bothering her, you either believe her or she's just bad at communication. OP replies, The over-explaining was not things like who Moses was, but it was still kind of overbearing. It felt a bit like they were trying to introduce her to Judaism, which I thought was weird. And my dad was just like going on about why we use the Haggadah, etc. When I really just wanted them to get on with it. But everyone's right that it might not have anything to do with the cedar. I'm definitely making assumptions because the change in her behavior came right after the cedar. I'm going to go talk to her in a more open-ended way and just try to be honest and give her space to be honest without judgment. And now, on to the updates. It's been a weird effing week, so I apologize if this isn't the most coherent update. After I posted, I really appreciated the advice, noting that I might be making some assumptions about what was upsetting my girlfriend Lily. So I asked her if we could talk and that I just wanted to be open with each other. She agreed to meet up on Friday after work, when we normally would anyway for a date. So I made a nice meal for her at my apartment. It was her favorite thing that I cook, this creamy lemony pasta dish, and then afterwards I tried to just kind of have this open-ended conversation about what I noticed. For example, how she's been more distant, and was there something wrong? She was really hesitant, just looking kind of nervous, and then she just kind of blurted out that the cedar made her uncomfortable. Okay, so that's what I thought, right? So I figure, okay, let's talk this through. It turns out that while she knew that I was Jewish, she didn't think that I was so Jewy until she came to the cedar. I cringed and told her that the word Jewy was inappropriate and she did not like me saying that. Um, <laughs> excuse me? <laughs> There's a part of the Passover cedar where we say next year in Jerusalem, just like a kind of hopeful attitude in light of the Jewish diaspora, I think. Anyway, she said that she found that part really inappropriate given the current war in Gaza. I told her that those things were not connected. My family has no real connection to Israel, and the cedar is hundreds, maybe thousands of year old tradition that long predates the modern state of Israel. She didn't seem to care about that. So I finally asked her if she had a problem being in a relationship with me given my Jewishness. She emphatically said that no, she loves me, but it was a shock and that she needs time. That really threw me though, and I asked her what she needs time for, but she didn't have a real answer. So I went to my parents for the weekend to just kind of get away, since I wasn't sure what this all meant. While I was gone, I get an alert on my phone that an air tag was following me. I found it hidden in my car. I called Lily and she denied that it was hers, but I was pretty sure she was lying since she's not a good liar. Finally, she admitted that she was trying to see where I was going and if it was to the temple. I honestly hadn't been inside a temple since my bar mitzvah almost 13 years ago. Anyway, it should go without saying that I ended it. I blocked her on everything, I destroyed her air tag too. No clue what the hell is wrong with her, but it feels anti-Semitic, I guess. I wish I had a happier update. I thought she was the one, but F me, I guess. Edits, due to popular demand, this is the recipe. It's on cooking.newyorktimes slash recipes slash 1589 linguine with lemon sauce. I double the recipe and use more cheese and lemon zest than it calls for, but not exact amounts. Just kind of go with the flow on adding more. You all made me laugh with your desire for this recipe during a time where I'm feeling really effing low, so thank you. Edit 2. I guess the post got locked? I was mostly okay with the discussion I saw, but maybe that's because the mods took care of some bad shit before I saw it. If that's the case, then thank you mods. I finally read through all, I think all, of the comments. To those that made me laugh, I sincerely thank you. I'm very stoned right now eating sour gummies and laugh crying at stupid movies. That is my coping mechanism, and I recognize that it's not healthy, especially with my Ashkenazi gastrointestinal issues. Anyway, 
To those that think that this was an issue that she had with me being religious, I don't think you understand what Judaism and Jewishness is. I'm not religious, I'm actually an atheist. Her issue was with my cultural background. She didn't see my culture because I guess it's not on display all the time. I mean, I think I have a pretty stereotypically Jewish sense of humor, but maybe she didn't put that together. Anyway, the more I think about it, the more I realize what other people said here is true. She wanted me to be generically white, and when she realized I was more ethnic than that, she had an issue with it. That is anti-Semitism, full stop. I did end up telling some mutual friends the full story, and one of them told me they actually suspected she might have some conspiracy theories rattling around in her head, which, if true, is like, ha, huh, I don't even know. He thinks she was attempting to track me because of some protocols of the elders of Zion crap that she might believe, like she was hoping that I would lead her to the secret meeting. I honestly hope that that's not true, and I take it with a massive grain of salt. To those who think that this was a made-up post, I effing wish. I honestly feel like maybe this is a weird dream that I'm gonna wake up from, and my perfect, beautiful girlfriend will still be there. But she's not who I thought she was. It is all too real. I'm not gonna wade into the political quagmire, except to say that my ex-girlfriend's issues with me was about way more than a war thousands of miles away. I don't actually think that she and I probably disagree all that much on how we feel about that war. If you can't separate those things and see the anti-Semitism behind her actions and attitudes and language, then you are a part of the problem. Hope you all enjoy the lemon pasta. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!